Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya'i wal Mursalin Khatamal Nabiyyin Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi Ajma'in Allahumma salli ala Muhammad An Nabiyyil Umiyyi Wa ala alihi wa sallam Tasliman kathiran kathiran Amma ba'd Faqara qala Allah ta'ala Fi kitabihi al-mubin فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم خفة الجنة بالمكاره وخفت النار بش وخفت النار بالشهوات صدق الله العظيم ورسوله الكريم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأخل القرة من لسان يفقه قولي الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله certainly all praises are for Allah سبحانه وتعالى our Creator our Sustainer our Protector the All Wise the All Powerful the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that one who gives you and I the ability every single day of our lives and He inspires us each and every single day of our lives to do good actions and just by us, give, just by us giving the ability to do these actions we should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by us actually give, getting the ability to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a ni'mah and a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in itself so we should praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whenever we could and utilize whatever time we have in remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How foolish is that person who is on a ship or on a boat and as he's sailing on this boat, he keeps on throwing water intentionally inside of the boat. After some time, this will cause the boat to sink and it will destroy him. And likewise, how foolish is this person who goes about in this dunya and intentionally gets attached to this dunya. The water is used as a method and a medium for this boat to reach its destination. And likewise, this dunya, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, it is the medium in which is used for you and I to reach our destination, which is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we should utilize whatever time we have in a way that is beneficial to us, that is beneficial to our akhirah, not that is beneficial to the dunya alone. Don't let us be from amongst the foolish people who intentionally destroy themselves by getting attached to this dunya. When we look at this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it in such a way whereby every single thing in this dunya is surrounded by one thing and when this one thing it expires then every single thing expires as well our life and this dunya in itself expires and that is time every single one of us have been given time and when that time has expired then we expire as well so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they stress the importance and they bring bring us to uh, make us alert as to how important this time is for us Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in a hadith that many of us we know ni'matani mabunun fihima kathirun minan nas that you know there are two favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with but many of us we are deceived by it as-sihha wal farag and that is good health and that is time, free time now how many of us actually think that you know we're gonna to die tomorrow or that we're not gonna have no free time tomorrow how many of us we think that you know tomorrow now we will be bedridden how many of us we think that our feet will be amputated tomorrow so we can't walk to the masjid again 
how many of us think about our health and our time like this how many of us think that you know we're gonna get sick in a couple minutes how many of us think that we're gonna get an accident now the villa in a couple minutes so it is something that you and I we don't think about especially the youths we don't really think about this as well because we always think that we have more and more time that is the thing we always think we have more time tomorrow I could do this tomorrow I could start to do this tomorrow I'm gonna to perform my salah when I reach 40 years then I'll start performing my salah when I reach 40 years then I could start wearing hijab so we have this thought in our mind that you know we have time but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given each and every single one of us an appointed time we don't know what that, when that appointed time is and when we look at time in itself we can look at it as a capital that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us each one of us have been given a certain amount of capital some people have been given 10 years 15 years 20 30 40 60 70 years and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this capital for us to invest it in a way that will bring us benefit in the hereafter. So it is up to you and I now to invest this capital that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you and I in a way that will bring about happiness in this dunya and in the hereafter. So when you and I we utilize this time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we have invested this capital in a beneficial manner but when you and I we utilize this time and this capital that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us in a way that will bring about the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that will bring about the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that will bring about the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in reality we have incurred a loss and it isn't any and any type of loss but it is a major loss in the sight of us and the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself he brings us he brings awareness to how important this time is of ours when you and I we make an oath you know you hear a lot of times people say they swear by their mother's grave they swear by the holy Quran they swear by all of these things the reason that they swear by the, the they swear by these things is because you know they they hold some sort of value and some weight towards these things. They have value to these things. But the difference is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by something, it gives importance to that object afterwards. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says by time. And that by by itself shows the importance of time in itself. Because as I said, as when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by something, it shows importance towards that thing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing us and is trying to make us aware of how important this time of ours is. That it is something we should ponder about how we are spending our time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna insan ala fi khusr. That you know, many people, certainly people are in a state of loss. They are in a state of loss because they are utilizing their time in a way that is not beneficial to them whatsoever. We are in a state of loss because we don't utilize the time in a way that will bring about the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't utilize the capital that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you and I in a way that will bring a profit in the hereafter. Hence, in the insan ala fi that certainly man is in a state of loss. Alama Ibn Atayallah al-Iskandari Ali Rahma He says Ma fata min umurika La iwada lahu That you see that time of your life that has passed La iwada lahu That there is no compensation for it whatsoever There is no compensation for it Meaning you cannot get it back It is priceless That couple seconds that has gone by You can't get it back But you see what has reached here now? There's nothing, there's no value for it. It is priceless. This time that you and I we have right now, it is valuable, it is priceless. You can never, you cannot exchange it for anything. Such that if you and I we were to have the entire dunya at our disposal, 
We would have the most wealth. We would have every single thing. And if we were to, we cannot even trade it for one second of time. That is how valuable is time that you and I we have. It can never ever be replaced. So this entire dunya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed for us, and this entire world, this entire existence is surrounded by this time, this important time, this irreplaceable time. And you and I now have to utilize this time in a way that we are adhering to the Asdi, we are adhering to Islam in every aspect of our lives. We have to utilize this time in a way that is pleasurable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do you and I utilize this time? It is firstly by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that you and I we do. Every action that you and I we do, we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because any action that it doesn't that is void from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a wasteful action. It is an action that has no benefit in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything done for the sake of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then understand that there is no reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that action. So the first thing is that we should always try our best to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our lives. It doesn't mean that you have to come in the masjid and 24 7 and do dhikr and do salah. What it means is that in everything that you do, you have, the, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. You have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mind. That you know you are doing this for the sake of Allah. You are working for the sake of Allah. You are working and you are trying to earn a halal income so that you don't have to go and, so that you don't have to go and do something haram. All of this is forms of worship, my dear brothers, my dear sisters. We should have a pure intention, a khalis intention. We should always have that intention that, you know, whatever I am doing, it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not doing it for the sake of people. I am not performing in my salah for the sake of my parents. I am not performing, I am not giving charity for people to see that I am a charitable Muslim. I am not going for hajj so that I can tell people that I am going for hajj afterwards. But I am doing all of these things for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am doing this so that I can earn the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. When we utilize the time in this dunya in a way that is beneficial, then on that day when there will be no shade except the shade of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on that day when it is mentioned that the sun will be one meal or milaini, two miles or one mile away from our heads, and according to some ulama, they say that the meal, that meal, the Arabic word meal, is considered to be that stick that they use to apply surma. So that is like a couple inches long. So according to some ulama, that is how far the sun will be from our heads. Subhanallah. And today, we complain so much about the heat of the sun. And the sun is about 93 million miles away from our heads. No, not even from our heads, from earth. Subhanallah. And we complain about the heat of it. And on the day of judgment, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, that sun will be about one mile or two miles away from our heads. People will be sweating on that day to the extent that they will be drowning from their own sweats. Subhanallah. And, they will, and this is because of the amount of good actions or the amount of sins that you and I we used to do. So when we utilize this time in this dunya in a way that is pleasurable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we'll get the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll be under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because from among those people who will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day is a just imam, a person who's a just ruler. A youth who grows up in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it is time to go online, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he is prompted to go and do something haram, he remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are those two Muslim, Muslim brothers or Muslim sisters that they only meet for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or they only separate from each other because of the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the some of the people that will be under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we need to utilize this time that you and I we have in this dunya in a way that will bring about that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if you and I we go about this dunya only following our whims and our desires, 
that will be like that foolish person that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about. He says, Al kayisu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al maut. He says, it is not that intelligent person. He is that person who he takes account of himself. He checks himself. And he does actions for that, for that which will benefit him in the hereafter. He doesn't just sit down and say that, you know, things will come to him. But he goes out and he works and he strives hard for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the ajiz wal ajizu, you know who's that foolish person? He's that person that he does, he follows his desires. He follows his whims and desires. Whatever his whims and desires, he t- tells him till he does it. So for example, his whims and desires, it tells him that not to perform salah right now. I'm lazy, I don't want to go and perform salah right now. So he stays in his bed and he doesn't come and perform salah. His whims and his desires tells him that, you know, it is time for masjid. And his whims and desires tells him that, you know, don't go today, go on next day. Or it's too much, you know, the crime level is too high. I don't want, don't go. All of his desires are telling him to do these things. So he follows it. Just a side note. With respect to performing salah, my dear brothers, my dear sisters in the masjid, you know, many of us, you know, we, when it is when time for Fajr and Maghrib and Isha, you know, many of us, we have this ideology of crime. Of crime. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he states that, you know, that person who, who gets up in the morning and he goes to perform his salah in jama'at in, for Fajr salat, or he goes and performs the night salat, the Isha salat in Jama'at, then understand that this person he is in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is under the security of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know, you and I, we claim we love Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You and I, we claim that we believe in the ahadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we hear these ahadith, then shouldn't we believe it? And shouldn't we accept it? And shouldn't we follow it afterwards? That you know, we are in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we come out for Fajr Salat and Jama'ah. We are in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we come out for Isha Salat and Jama'ah. So why do we use the excuse of crime in our life for this? So going back, the arduous person is that person, that foolish person who he does, he follows his whims and his, and his desires. But you know what he does afterwards? He has that false hope. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa tamanna ala Allah. And the word tamanna it means, you know, when a person, an elderly person, let me say for example, an elderly person says he wishes he was young again. You know, it can happen. Tamanna ala Allah. This is the type of hope that this person has. It can happen. Think about it. A person is only falling in whims and desires, and then you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to have mercy upon you. You don't even care about the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you want the, the, you are hoping for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my dear respected brothers, my dear respected sisters, this dunya, it is something that is short and it is something that will soon fade away and disappear. Only a matter of time. The hereafter is baqi, it is something that will remain. It is something that will remain forever and ever and ever and it is something that you and I can never ever understand. You and I can never ever understand the concept of hold and forever and everlasting. Our minds cannot perceive it. But understand that the hereafter is something that will never come to an end. So we should utilize this moment that we have that is priceless, that is valuable and that we can never ever get back in a way that will bring about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will bring about the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will grant us the connection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we need so that when we are dying we can say La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah because there is only those people who live a life according to La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah that they will be given the ability to say so I'll close off with this state with this story that recently I was listening to this incident about a young man, he was about 21 years old, his name was Muhammad, he was on his deathbed. And what happened was that the Muslim doctor, he saw this patient and he read the file. So when he read the file now, he read the report and he saw that this young boy had AIDS. So immediately he called the parents and his mother answered. And he wanted to know what was the affair of this young man. So she said that, oh, you know this young... Her son never used to listen to him, listen to her. 
the son of God was straying away and going into the wrong path. She was, he was going too far from the, from the path. And he had this girlfriend. And as they were talking now, after they talked and so on, the boy started to wake up. And as the boy wake, was waking up, Muhammad was waking up, the machines that were connected to him were starting to beep. And the, the doctors, the nurses at that time realized that how it was close to the time of death for this young boy. So, the Muslim doctor, being concerned, he went and he tried to encourage this young boy to say the shahada. And he was only saying, Qul la ilaha illallah, Qul la ilaha illallah, Qul la ilaha illallah. He was only saying, Say la ilaha illallah, Say la ilaha illallah, Say la ilaha illallah. And uh, the boy's mouth was starting to open. So you know, he was starting to get a little hope that you know he's going to say it. But you know what the young boy said? He says, where is my girlfriend? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never gave that young boy the ability to say the shahada. And this is because of the way we live. If you and I think we can live a life of dishonesty, we can live a life of deceit, we can live a life of haram, and still think that it's going to be easy to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah on the day when we are going to die, then we should think again. We should take account of ourselves and reflect upon that. Because the reality is that the only way you and I we can really say that shahada is when we live a life according to Islam. We live a life according and adhering to Islam in every single aspect of our life. Because Islam, my dear brothers, is a perfect and complete way of life. There isn't a single moment of our life where Islam doesn't cover. It covers from before birth and even after we die. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability and the tawfiq and the understanding of what has been said and to practice upon what has been said. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to stay away from haram and to utilize the little time that we have in this dunya in a way that will bring benefit and a profit in the hereafter for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. May protect our Muslim brothers and sisters around the world. And may grant them victory. Wa akhira da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.